Dear viewers, warm welcome to the Voice of Somaliland. Today we are broadcasting from Sweden. And we are so proud to have the opportunity to broadcast this program that will tell you about all the great things that happened last weekend here at the Celebrate Somaliland Conference, the Somaliland World Congress, with visitors from all Europe and Africa and all over Sweden, of course. So we are happy and glad that you are with us today and uh, please enjoy this broadcast. I'm so proud to work with the nation of Somaliland. It's the only democratic nation at all the Horn of Africa and also at the Arabian Peninsula. The neighboring countries as Yemen, that you have full war today, or Oman and Saudi Arabia, non-democratic nations, or Eritrea, they have such huge problems with human rights and democracy, and also Djibouti and Ethiopia, that is not fully democratic nations and Somalia that you have such huge problems with terrorists, with piracy and with uh, non-democratic movements. And in the middle of all this you find one nation and that is the nation of Somaliland. The nation of Somaliland's border was established already 1884 and today the people are living in peace and stability in the, in the middle of one of the worst regions of the world. So I'm so proud to be a part of this. And I just want to say Somaliland Hanulato. The flag of Somaliland! Somaliland Hanulato! Somaliland Hanulato! That's the only democratic elected government in all the Horn of Africa on the Arabia Peninsula. And it's also the only country that is not recognized. Entrepreneurs could be a political entrepreneurs, we have them here. It could be a social entrepreneur, we have them here. It could be a societal entrepreneur, we have them here. It could be a business entrepreneur, we have them here. It, and we, so we can go on and on. What does it mean to be an entrepreneur? To get something done. We need entrepreneurs from all sectors of society working together in a new collaboratory called the future. The new interface between countries, sectors, industries and ideas. Because without vision, people will perish. Countries will perish. Cities will perish. The mission that you are wishing that your country will come into existence recognized by the global community. That I congratulate you too. This requires leadership on all levels. To lead from the front, not from the back. To lead underneath, to serve your fellow people in your country. And I think that's what you do. This is for Somaliland. For so Somaliland, we sing Release Me Tonight, okay? It's time to get released, yes? So we proclaim that together tonight uh, with Mr. Rebot. For Somaliland, Release Me, yes. Release me to be somebody Cause I can't go on So why do I keep holding back? I said, release me, so I'm not able to destroy myself, but I better rock without you, all right, man. I got my heart on, wait a minute, 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 wait a min
opportunity to say thank you to Mikel who made it possible for Somaliland national football team to make history. I would like to say thank you. Now we have done it at the man, Hada Somaliland Chashai, Hada Somaliland Itam Kalisi, the man team, Sam Hotum Mikel. We know he is, we know he is, we know he is. government of Somaliland for having given me this opportunity to come to you here today so that I may speak with you on this very important occasion. I thank you all very much. My message to you today is a message I wish you to carry in your hearts and a message I want you to tell the world again and again wherever you get a chance. Because the true history of our country must be told. Because there are too many people who know nothing about Somaliland, who know nothing about our history, who know nothing about the geographical location of Somaliland, who are spreading wrong information about us. Now, for those who may know, and for those who need to know about the facts about Somaliland, whether they wish to recognize it or not, I will share with you the factual history of my country, Somaliland. <laughs> British Somaliland was British Pro Somaliland Protectorate, and it was established in 1884. Our borders were marked following treaties between France, Britain, Italy, and Ethiopia in order to define the French territory of La Côte Française de Somalie, British Somaliland Protectorate, and La Somalia Italiana. But there is but here's the question. The question that we ask you, the question that we ask the world. What makes the other borders, the other African borders, the colonial borders, legal and permanent, but makes the borders of Somaliland illegal? It's a question. I am asking the world. Somaliland has the same borders today that it had when it was established in 1884. It had the same borders as our independence from Britain in 1960. And it had the same borders when we separated from Somalia in 1991. 
Now, since our independence, which is 55 years old, our independence from that British protectorate was negotiated and was born not through conflict, but was not, it was not self-declared. It was a negotiated sovereignty that followed a royal proclamation from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, which makes our independence from Britain total, legal, and binding. In 1960, Somaliland was the 12th independent African nation. And it was senior to 42 African countries who were still under colonial rule in 1960 when Somaliland became independent. Somehow, these 42 countries are among the current 53 members of the African Union, who ironically have given themselves the authority to determine the fate of Somaliland. After independence, Somaliland became a member of the United Nations and was immediately recognized by 34 UN member states, including the five permanent members of the Security Council. 64 years later, since we have neither resigned from our membership in the United Nations, nor given it away to anybody, we still claim ownership of our independence and that of our membership in the United Nations. In fact, it is our neighbor, former Italian Somalia, who piggybacked on the existing UN membership of Somaliland, which we had already secured five days before Somalia even became independent. The fact that Somaliland was the senior mother country to which Somalia united is also overlooked by the international community. The international community grants our former junior partner a de facto position of ownership over Somaliland. The truth is, Somalia does not legally own that position, nor can Somaliland be considered a breakaway region, because Somalia, who followed to jo who allowed to join us, neither owned or bought any part of Somaliland, nor has annexed Somaliland through a military conquest. It is also worth mentioning here that the Act of Union, which would have formalized the, in, the unification of the two sovereign Somali states, was never ratified by the parliaments of the two countries. This proves that the 31-year failed union between Somaliland and Somalia from 1960 to 1991 was only an informal and turbulent partnership that ended after a brutal 11-year civil war. Our temporary union was therefore a union that was never legally binding on either side. We all remember the union between Senegal and Gambia, which lasted only six months. The union between Egypt and Syria lasted three years. Just as we did, these countries went into a voluntary union in good faith as sovereign countries. But when their union failed to satisfy the aspirations of their people, they separated 
without any punishment or banishment from the international community. On the contrary, Somaliland is being punished, and Somaliland is being banished for doing exactly the same as these countries did. Somaliland at least gave our union a much longer trial and only separated from the military from it after the military regime of Somalia and Somalia's dictator, Siad Barre, carried out war crimes and acts of genocide against our people. We withdrew from the Union when government airplanes indiscriminately bombed and flattened 90% of our cities and destroyed our schools, destroyed our hospitals, destroyed our mosques, destroyed our markets. We withdrew from it when tanks and heavy artillery pounded civilian dwellings without pity. During those 11 years of genocide, and mass killings of civilians, the world did absolutely nothing to stop the carnage of our people. Where was democracy? Where was the justice? Where was democracy then, when thousands of women and children were massacred? Where was democracy? when over half a million of our people became internally displaced? Where was democracy and where was justice when an additional million sought shelter in camps in Ethiopia, in Djibouti, and many came to Sweden and other countries where they could find refuge? To this day, we discover mass graves containing the remains of small children. So far, 100 mass graves have been registered by the United Nations forensic experts. Sadly, the international community chooses to reward the perpetrators of these crimes with billions of your taxpayers' money when we, who have been the victims, are being denied a hearing and therefore being denied our day in court. This is the closest we have gotten to a hearing in 24 years. Ladies and gentlemen, the liberation of Somaliland in 1991 was brought about successfully, and we worked hard since then to keep the peace and the stability that we enjoy today. We achieved it through the sheer determination of our men and women and that of our traditional leaders. Unlike the 16 or 17 or 18 Somalia peace conferences that were held in different countries and which were all heavily funded by the international community, Peace in Somaliland is totally homegrown and was funded entirely with our own resources. That is why peace holds in Somaliland. To this day, it holds because we wish it to hold. After the liberation, we held several peace conferences. And since Somaliland's victory over the defeat, defeated troops of Siad Barre and our subsequent separation from Somalia in 91, we, have, we too have held a series of self-funded peace, reconciliation and reconstruction conferences inside our territory inside Somaliland. The first conference was held in Berbera in February 1991, when our traditional elders unanimously agreed to let bygones 
be bygones. They urged a people not to seek revenge, nor bear malice for any persons from Somalia still living in Somaliland. Consequently, 10,000 Somalia troops that became stranded in Somaliland after the war were fed, sheltered for three months, not for one day or two, and were protected until a safe corridor could be secured for them for their return to Somalia. And when a Somali, a refugee in a poor country, war-torn, offers you hospitality, offers 10,000 troops hospitality for three months and shares food and precious water with them, that is the humane and neighborly behavior, and I am proud that my people did that. <laughs> Neither the UN nor international peacekeeping forces were needed to escort the returning prisoners of war back to their country, Somalia. The protection of the prisoners while they were in our country was assured entirely by the troops of Somaliland and not by foreign troops. That general amnesty holds to this day in Somaliland. And we are proud to report that a large number of laborers and merchants from Somalia work and live in Somaliland with their families and with their children without any restrictions or fear for their lives. That is what Somaliland's democracy is all about, ladies and gentlemen. Several other peace conferences have been held in Somaliland, and the most notable one being the one in Bor'o in 1991. When the separation from Somalia was formalized and unanimously approved, and approved by all the clans of Somaliland, the second one major conference was held in Borama and was the famous, successful Borama Congress in 1993 when we developed the National Charter that became the blueprint for the civilian and democratic system of government that has been in place in Somaliland since that time. Now, during the Borama Conference, over 500 representatives of all the clans of Somaliland elected their president and vice president, our late president Mohammed Haji Ibrahim Egal, my late husband, and vice president Abdurrahman Aw Ali, a great man. Immediately, Somalilanders had no choice other than to start rebuilding the country on a self-help basis. Somalilanders rebuilt their country without international assistance, without a national plan, without its financial support. We did it without the political recognition that the country deserves, but which has been denied to us. We did it with our own meager resources and, stim and, and were stimulated by the energy and the determination of our people. <laughs> the Borama Congress was followed by the referendum to adopt the Somaliland Constitution. This was held in May 2001 and was approved by an overwhelming majority of 79% of our people. Not 100%, because we are a democracy, and people have the choice to say yes and to say no. <laughs> Voters also reaffirmed their support for the country's sovereignty which is consistent with the basic human rights of people to seek self-determination 
as contained in the charters of the African Union and that of the United Nations. In December 2002, we held our first local government and parliamentary elections. In April 2003, we held our first presidential elections. Having then completed a long and difficult transition from a traditional clan-based political system, we moved to a stable, multi-party democracy in Somaliland. We have held several other political elections which have all been successful, democratic, and which have all been witnessed by the international community. The presence of Sweden as observers was welcomed and appreciated. We are preparing for another fair, free and democratic presidential elections and hope that Sweden will be with us once again. Many recognized countries in Africa cannot boast of such an exemplary record in Somaliland. That is what we call democracy in action. Less than three years after our separation from Somalia, Somaliland became the second African country after South Africa to achieve general and voluntary demobilization of its militia. We demobilized our freedom fighters without international assistance and without international troops to make it happen. We all know how many times demobilization had been attempted in Somalia with the help of peacekeeping forces from more than 27 countries, including the United States of America. And we all know how badly and tragically these attempts had failed. We in Somaliland brokered our own demobilization. We paid for it with our own resources and then incorporated the demobilized militia into our national army, which is now trained and which protects Somalilanders to this day. Now, 24 years after separation from Somalia, Somaliland is a country of hope, of peace and of determination. Landmines have been removed and over a million refugees have returned home from refugee camps or from the diaspora. Thousands of dwellings have been rebuilt. Major economic infrastructure has been repaired or built. And schools and hospitals and mosques and ports and airports and other public property have been rebuilt. Today, we have an economy that is increasingly attracting foreign investors who wish to do business in Somaliland. Above all, Somaliland has built a society founded on peace, justice and the rule of law. We stand neither for secession nor for the revision of Africans' borders. We respect and reaffirm our commitment to the peace and stability of the region, the Horn of Africa, which includes an unreserved respect for the unity and the territorial integrity of nations. Somaliland was among the first African states to be free from colonial rule, and our demand for recognition implies full respect for the borders of British Somaliland Protectorate as handed over to us at the moment of our independence from Great Britain. And ladies and gentlemen, the good relations we enjoy with our neighbors and neighboring states are the cornerstones of our foreign policy. We strive for a more stable, democratic and prosperous Horn of Africa. Our system of free market economy seems to fully agree with the entrepreneurial character of our people. 
It is seen in the dramatic economic growth that exists and which has earned us the description of a rare African miracle. Today, we have more hospital beds, we have more universities, and we have more young people attending schools and colleges and universities, more than we have ever had in our past history. We have more advanced telecommunication system, an, ele an electronic money transfer system than many countries in the world. Somaliland has mineral resources that have not yet been exploited. We have oil, we have gas, we have coal, and we have the world's largest gypsum deposit. We also have an 850-kilometer-long coastline that is free from pirates and which is strategically located on the Gulf of Aden. It is rich. It is rich with marine resources and is only waiting to be exploited in order to boost our economy and to create jobs for thousands of our people. <laughs> the deep water port of Berbera se serves as a major outlet and in inlet for landlocked neighboring Ethiopia, which has a population of over 70 or 80 million. Berbera Airport has the longest runway in Africa, having been built by the British, extended by the Soviet Union, and then by the United States to become one of the six landing sites for the Columbia Space Shuttle. Did you know that? Regretfully, even though Somaliland is a country that can be considered a rare African success story, the former organizations of African unity, as well as the present African Union, is spending more time and more effort over Africa's failures and Africa's conflicts, instead of giving credit to Africa's achievements, similar to the shining example that we have in Somaliland today. <clears throat> Independence and sovereignty for Somaliland is a reality with no turning back of the clock. <clears throat> what remains today is for the international community to come to terms with that reality and to arrive at the only possible and just conclusion, the recognition of Somaliland as a rightful member of the world community of nations. <clears throat> Failing to do that would be a great discredit to human rights and to democracy itself. It would destroy the hard-won stability that Somaliland enjoys today it could result in another mass exodus from the Horn of Africa that would scatter our people to the four corners of the world again. Somalilanders have had time to recover, have had time to heal emotionally, and have had time to rebuild their country economically, politically and militarily. And from this position of strength, it gives us the confidence to move forward and to extend a hand of friendship and a hand of welcome towards anyone who has the mandate to represent and speak for the people of former Italian Somalia in order to initiate serious dialogue. This dialogue would be based on the goodwill and the mutual respect for the territorial integrity 
of the two sovereign Somali countries that united on the 1st of July, 1960. <laughs> this dialogue could become the foundation upon which the two peoples could build a platform for sound and serious negotiations between neighbors, between brothers, between families, so that our people on both sides of the border would find peace, stability, again, after a quarter of a century of troubles, tragedy and turmoil. The people of Somaliland have made a clear choice. The question now is, will the international community respect the choice of the people of Somaliland? Now, I want to end my speech and express my appreciation for those who organized this conference. I congratulate Ambassador Roda and her team. I congratulate those who have supported her, her Mr. and Mrs. Tortensen. I thank the great people of Sweden who have welcomed me to their country four or five times, and each time I go back with a greater respect for this great country that is Sweden. I leave a message for our people who are living here because I wish to remind them that they have been given a home, they have been given a shelter, they have been given protection, and they have been given the opportunity to become educated and to better themselves. The best way they could thank the people of Sweden and the taxpayers' money that has protected you and fed you for that long is for you to make a good and positive use of the education that you have been given. That, that would be the best way to show that what has been given to you has not been wasted. And I want you to prove to the world that you will become people who will turn that education into a positive energy that would make this world a better and a safer place for all of us. That would make me proud of you. And I know that you can do it. <laughs> Walio san walio walio san walio walio san